Welcome, in this video we're gonna go through Cisco VLAN configuration step by step. Before we get started, this is just one video in a much longer series called GNS3 Labs for CCNA. So if the rest of that content interests you, please subscribe and check out those videos as well. And before we get into VLAN configuration, we're gonna discuss what a VLAN is, why you need VLANs, then we're gonna look at VLAN configuration commands, how to delete a VLAN, and we are also gonna go through VLAN verification commands in our demonstration. And then we're also going to create VLANs with the VLAN database for the Dynamips images and EtherSwitch modules. All right, so first, what is a VLAN? It stands for Virtual Local Area Network. It is a logical subnetwork that groups a collection of devices from different LANs. It's also known as a broadcast domain, and it allows hosts on different switches to be in the same logical subnet. Why do we need VLANs? This is a pretty common interview question because it controls broadcast traffic. You cannot simply have all traffic going everywhere. Uh, that leads to packet storms and network outages. It also improves performance on busy networks. VLANs can group client devices that communicate frequently with each other, and it allows you to divide traffic logically with the VLANs. All right, here we have some VLAN configuration commands. In order to create VLAN 10, you would enter VLAN then space 10. And then also right after creating it, you are able to name it with the name command. Switch port access VLAN 10 would add VLAN 10 to an access port. Switch port trunk allowed VLAN 10 would allow VLAN 10 across the trunk port. And then no VLAN 10 would delete VLAN 10. And then here we have the VLAN database commands. VLAN database enters VLAN database mode. VLAN 10 would create VLAN 10. And if you want to apply a specific name to VLAN 10, you could use the VLAN 10 name access in order to name it access. And then while in database mode, you can do no VLAN 10 to delete VLAN 10. All right, so now I have GNS3 pulled up. I have one EtherSwitch router, which is labeled ESW1. And then I have one layer three switch, which is this one right here by my cursor. So the first thing I'm gonna do is power these switches on. The next thing I'm gonna do is open up consoles for each of them with this button up here. All right, so our layer three switch has booted up. All right, so with these two commands, we are going to create VLAN 10. Then you can see that the prompt changed and we are essentially in a mode where we can change the specifics for the VLAN that we just created. So I'm gonna put in name access, which gives the VLAN a name of access. And now we're gonna put in do show VLAN brief. And you can see that VLAN 10 isn't in the VLAN database yet. And the reason for that is because it doesn't actually create the VLAN until we exit out of this. Now, if we do the show VLAN brief, now we can see that VLAN 10 is in there. All right, next we are going to create an access port and put that in VLAN 10. And those are the commands that you need to do that. Now, if we do a show VLAN brief again, you can see that we now have this interface, the one we just configured is in VLAN 10. So you can use, you can use show VLAN or show VLAN brief to verify whether the VLANs are created. I use show VLAN brief, it cuts out a lot of the extra stuff that I don't typically need. All right, next we're going to just create a trunk port and allow VLAN 10 across that. And then to verify, and then to verify, we're gonna use this command right here, show interfaces trunk. You can see that we have one trunking interface that is allowing VLAN 10 across that trunk. All right, next we're gonna move on to the EtherSwitch router. And the first step here is gonna be to enter VLAN database mode with that command. And then we can put in VLAN 10 to create VLAN 10. And you can see that the name right here is just that. If you don't, if you don't assign it a name, that's what it gives you. All right, then we'll put in this command, which essentially creates the VLAN and gives it a name. And now you can see that the name has been changed to access. Uh, so in order to save this VLAN, you have to put apply in here right now. And if you do not, the VLAN will not be saved. So I'm gonna exit without saving and with the abort command. And then on the EtherSwitch router, this is the command that you wanna use to verify that the VLANs are created. 
show VLAN switch brief. And you can see that because I didn't save it, the VLAN isn't in there. So we'll just go VLAN database. Go back in there. Create it again, this command, and give it a name. And then we'll hit apply. Now that actually saves the VLAN to the VLAN database. And you can also use show current while in this mode. And this will show us the information about the VLANs. Here we have our VLAN 10. Abort to exit that mode. And then again, we'll do show VLAN switch brief. And you can see that the VLAN is there. Now, if you want to delete this VLAN, you would have to go back into the VLAN database. No VLAN 10. You can see it's still there, right, why? And the reason that it's still there is because I didn't apply the changes. So go VLAN database no VLAN 10, then apply. Now, now when we verified, now it's not there because we had to apply those changes before leaving VLAN database mode. And then over on the layer three switch image, delete the VLAN, do show VLAN brief, you can see that it's gone. All right, so that is step-by-step -step how to create VLANs, assign them names, delete them, as well as the verification commands. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.